Boy, do I have a lot of people to thank this week. First off, Dave Vellante, who at the beginning of this week had me on the show, The Cube. We talked about multi-cloud and data sharing, modern data stacks, and how organizations in various industries create a sustainable competitive advantage by thinking about data as an ecosystem. I hope you have the chance to take a look at this video. This is a great article as well. Let me know uh, what you think. And then, of course, I want to thank all my customers and partners and community members who in the last few months have partnered with us for this program called Data Journeys. These are quick interviews designed to extract best practices from leaders in the community that have experienced amazing success with their data journey. So I hope uh, you can uh, subscribe, uh, participate, and learn from this series. We launched a teaser uh, just this past Tuesday, and every Tuesday a.m. now, we will be releasing a new interview. So I hope uh, you can get value out of this. And then finally, the three special contributors this week, Miles, Krishna, and Wayne, who have tagged me on some amazing, amazing content around innovation flywheel, agile data management, and five steps to create a data advantage. We're going to cover that. But before we go there, I want to point you at least two great stories. Mark, the CTO of Crux Informatics, did a great job describing how and why he picked a modern data platform. We learned from the post how he thinks about data users, data federations, how to think about moving data from one cloud to the next. Uh, I hope you can read it and maybe even connect with Mark if you have time. And then if you are an aspiring chief data officer, if you're an aspiring CDO, you are sitting in front of a ton of opportunity. Richard Wang, who runs the CDO program at MIT, found that they are over, wait for it, 3,800 job postings on LinkedIn for chief data officers. So polish your resume and get started today if you are ready to take this next step. All right, you've heard it all. Data lakes, data lake house, data fabric, data mesh, data hub, data as a network. And you're probably now more confused than you were before you heard these terms. As Wayne Eckerson notes in his blog on the modern data architecture, each of these words brings important concepts to the field of data architecture, but collectively they don't create a clear path to adaptable data architecture. And in many ways it has become less clear. So if you're looking for clarification, understanding the difference between complex and complicated, how to think about a data lake, a data mesh, a data hub, and a data fabric, this is the post. I don't often say this, but if there's one resource you have time to read this week, this would be the one. I've known Wayne for many, many years. He's super knowledgeable. He works at depth with many industry leaders. He's actually written books about their success. So as I explained earlier in the week, in my opinion, these terms are not up for vendors to define. It's up for you as a customer and you need people like Wayne to help you uh, simplify the complex. Take a look at his blog and hopefully you can connect with him and he can help you as well. My second piece of the week is a story from Fidelity's investment head of data, Mihir Shah, who has created this concept of neighborhoods to manage his data. So neighborhoods are similar theme projects across business units. He has rationalized 100 plus data warehouses into a common analytics platform. The blog details the five steps he took to do that. And so he talked about universal IDs, single customer profiles, single advanced cloud-based analytics platform, a central taxonomy and catalog to organize shared terminology and definitions of more of 3,000 data elements, and of course, a strong governance uh, function. Take a look at it. It's a great story, and it's also super helpful because it's very prescriptive. And then finally, I want to point you to another great piece this week by BCG, the Boston Consulting Group. This one was shared by uh, to me by Miles, and it talks about the concept of an innovation flywheel. What is it? How you can develop an innovation flywheel for your company and your team. BCG typically does very thorough research. And in this piece, they talk about how you can build an agile process uh, and innovate. They take examples like the UPS, Starbucks, National Grid, really great stuff. Uh, I hope all of this is going to be uh, useful to you. That's it for this week. As usual, if there's anything you'd like to suggest, just send it to me throughout the week or put it down here in the link. I hope this is helpful to you and help you get started on a great week. I will see you next week.